hello my lovelies it is time for my wrap up and wheel of tbr so stay tuned so i really did not get a lot read in march because of all of the traveling so I thought it would be a good idea for me to just go ahead and combine my wrap up and my wheel of TBR in this video. So let's start with my wrap up. So in the month of March, I read two books. They were both excellent books. I had a great time reading them, but yeah, I only read two. So the first book that I read was Defy the Night by Bridget Kimmer, and I gave this one four stars. This follows uh, a girl who works sort of like a Robin Hood, where she is stealing moonflowers to make this elixir in order to help people that are dying from this fever. And... The moonflowers are hard to come by and they're rationed out and if you don't have a lot of money you can't get them and things like that so she's she's stealing them and using them to help others but when she tries to steal them from the castle and gets caught things go a little wonky and it was it was really good and i definitely recommend it i'm looking forward to continuing the series and then today I finished reading Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kakawa, and that was another fantastic book. I think I'm going to give this one four and a half stars. I loved it. I want to continue with this whole trilogy. Julie's writing is fantastic. She has a way of putting you in the story. Uh, we had the live show with her just a few minutes ago, and I will link that up here if you want to go and check it out. But I know when she talked about the book, she kind of pictured it as an anime, and she was writing this anime story. And when I was reading it, I got vibes of like Final Fantasy RPG kind of game, and like with their journey and all of this. And when I told her that, she was really happy. She said that, that she loves Final Fantasy and that it, it, she was so happy that I got that vibe from her book. And, okay, so there are a lot of characters in this book, which usually is something that turns me off on a book. But the way she brought these characters in and let us get to know each of them before bringing in more characters really helped. But we follow this... Kitsune, a uh, little fox girl, who is given the task of taking this scroll from one monastery to another when her monastery is completely destroyed and everyone that she's ever known or cared for has been killed and everyone is after this scroll and she ends up teaming up with a demon slayer who is also somebody that is after this scroll, but kind of tricks him in a way to get him to help her make it to this other monastery without letting him know that she has the scroll. And the people they meet, the, the found family aspect, all of it is just so well done. The little side quests or, you know, extra things that they, they deal with on their journey is is really interesting and it was just a really well paced really well written book and i give it four and a half stars and i also cannot wait to continue reading the rest of it and that's it that is all i read for the entire <laughs> month of march hopefully april i'll get to reading a little bit more but who knows <laughs> we shall see and Honestly, I don't know what I want to try to fit in because there's so much that I want to read. I want to read more of the Defy the Night. I want to read more of Julie Kagawa's book or Kakawa's books. And I want to I also have my buddy read for my coffee patrons. Um, my book buddy of the month, Megan, has selected let me look. Between Sisters by Kristen Hanna. Uh, that's not a book that I own, um, and typically with the Book Buddy of the Month, 
Buddy Reads. It's one that I own. However, because I'm traveling, I just told him I need something that's on Libby or Hoopla or Scribd or whatever. And we were I was able to find this one. So that's the only thing I know for sure that I need to fit into my wheel. And I forgot that this is not the phone that I have my wheel on. So let me go grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, here is my wheel of TBR or my a virtual wheel for now. I have not added any new prompts onto here since the last time. I haven't really had time to even think about it. But we're just going to go with the prompts that are on here. There are plenty of them, as you saw. Let's see what spin number one gets us. So we're going to do a five spins. So here we go. popular book. Well, that should not be too difficult. All right, let me go on to Libby because that is probably the easiest thing as far as picking books. Let's see. Okay, um, so it goes through my library here and there is a section there that says popular. So I'm going to click on that and it goes to what's popular. <laughs> What's funny, the first thing is a, a Kristen Hanna book. It's called The Women, but not the one that is on my list here. So, or not the one that I need to read. Uh, we got Fourth Wing, Iron Flame. Read both of those. Uh, Court of Thorns and Roses. I've read that. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. I feel like that's one that I own. Let me double check. I feel like that's something I got from like a book of the month. I don't have it marked red or anything. Okay, so I think that's the one I'm going to go with. So let me tag it. Okay, this says Evie Porter has everything a nice southern girl could want. A perfect doting boyfriend, a house with a white picket fence in a garden, a fancy group of friends. The only catch, Evie Porter doesn't exist. The identity comes first. Evie Porter, when she's given a name and a location by her mysterious boss, Mr. Smith, she learns everything there is to know about the town and the people in it. Then the mark, Ryan Sumner. The last piece of the puzzle is the job. Evie isn't privy to Mr. Smith's real identity, but she knows this job will be different. Ryan has gotten under her skin, and she's starting to envision a different sort of life for herself. But Evie can't make any mistakes, especially after what happened last time, because one thing she's worked her entire life to keep clean, the one identity she could always go back to, her real identity, just walked right into this town. Evie Porter must stay one step ahead of her past while making sure there's still a future in front of her. The stakes couldn't be higher, but then Evie has always liked a challenge. And yes, that is one that I do believe I got from Book of the Month. So, yay. All right. Let's see what spin number two gives us. Nonfiction. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what we can find. On nonfiction. There's a lot here that I'm kind of interested in. Let's see, we got the Britney Spears, The Woman in Me. Actually, I think that's probably the one I want to go with. So I'm going to, well, let me see. Place hold. It's about five weeks wait. Mm. That would be cutting it close. Let's see what else we got. There's Atomic Habits by James Clear, but I have to put a hold on it. 14 weeks wait. No. I've already read Glad My Mom Died. Killers of the Flower Moon. Meh. Matthew Perry. The Prince Harry book. What else? Oh, There's Becoming by Michelle Obama. I do have that one, but that's a long audiobook. Ooh, that's a possibility, though. I'm trying to find ones that I'm pretty sure I own. Ooh, there's The Body by Bill Bryson. I do have that one. Actually, I think I'm going to go with that one. 
says Bill Bryson, best-selling author of A Short History of Nearly Everything, takes us on a head-to-toe tour of the marvel that is the human body. As addictive as it is comprehensive, this is Bryson at his very best. A must-read, owner's manual for everybody. And, yeah, I own this one, so I'm going to mark that one. And I think that's what I'm going to pick for this nonfiction. All right. I accidentally hit it. So spin number three. TBR Vet. This is a book that I have had for a very long time and have not read. Ooh. I think I know what I want for that. Actually, no. I don't. Oh, you know what? Let me look on my Goodreads and see if I can sort it by like books I've had the longest. Okay, I think I can do them by date added on my Goodreads at least. Okay, I don't want to pick things that are like way back in a you know book three or four in a series. Um, ooh, Girls Made of Snow and Glass, and I think that was one that was. Part of my have I read it so let me see if I can find that okay it is not available on Libby let me check other places okay it is available on Everend aka Scribd so I've marked that one and that's what I'm going to select for this so that was spin number three on to spin number four random word okay so for this i'm going to get a random word generator okay here is our random word generator what did it give us oh attract okay so i'm gonna say a romance we need a romance for this one we have People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. That could be a good choice. There's also Happy Place by Emily Henry. There's Slammed by Colleen Hoover, but that would be starting another series, and I don't know if I want to do that just right now. There's also A Touch of Darkness, but again, it's the start of another series. Oh, there's The Nanny by Laura Ferguson. I think I want to go with that one. That one is about this girl getting a job as a nanny and it turn and she also has like an OnlyFans page and it turns out the the man that she's working for is just like one of her biggest clients on OnlyFans or something. I think that would be a fun one. So I shall mark that one and that's what I'm going to select for random word. And Oh, also, after I finish all of my spins, I will figure out my um, TBR knockout as well as buzzword. I have no idea what those are this month. I haven't looked. And it's been so long since I created the TBR knockout that I don't remember <laughs> what every month is. So I have to look. Hold on. All right. So that was spin number four. <laughs> so spin, this is the final spin. color okay so random color generator all right there we go here's our random color generator let's see what color it gives us graphite gray i feel like that was the last color we got from the, so i'm gonna press it again black oh it's black blue but pretty much black <laughs> okay Let's find a book with a black cover. That shouldn't be hard. All right. I think for this one, I'm going to go with All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. Because if you look, there's black and there's blue. So I think that works. This says, 
One year ago, Isabel Drake's life changed forever. Her toddler son, Mason, was taken out of his crib in the middle of the night while she and her husband were asleep in the next room. With little evidence and few leads for the police to chase, the case quickly went cold. However, Isabel cannot rest until Mason is returned to her. Literally. Except for the occasional catnap or small blackout where she loses track of time she hasn't slept in a year. Isabel's entire existence now revolves around finding him, but she knows she can't go on this way forever. In hopes of jarring loose a new witness or buried clue, she agrees to be interviewed by a true crime podcaster, but his interest in Isabel's past makes her nervous. His incessant questioning, paired with her severe insomnia, has brought uncomfortable memories from her own childhood, making Isabel start to doubt her recollection of the night of Mason's disappearance, as well as second guess who she can trust, including herself. But she is determined to figure out the truth no matter where it leads. So that is what I'm going to select for that one. And now let's look and see what uh, the buzzword is. Okay, so for April, it's read a book with nature-related words in the title. For example, plant, planet, flower, sea, earth, grass, tangible items found in nature. Okay, do any of my books work for that? Would body count? Like the body? I feel like that would count. Oh, but there's also girls made of snow and glass, so snow would work. So I think that's what I'm going to select for buzzword. And it looks like my battery's about to die. So let me change that out really quick. Okay, so for TBR Knockout, the theme is Earth Day. And the first prompt is to read a book with nature on the cover. And for that, uh, all the dangerous things totally works for that because there's like a lake and you see trees and stuff. And then the second prompt is to read a dystopian and I don't feel like any of these are dystopian. So, let's see what I can add. Okay, I think I'm actually going to add a classic for this one. Um, because somebody was asking me the other day if I'd read this book and I hadn't. So, let's put that on there. Uh, I just searched dystopian on Libby and saw what I what came up and the first book that came up was Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury so I'm going to select that one for dystopian okay so that is my entire wrap up for March and my TBR for April have you guys read any of these books did you like them did you not comment down below and let me know well I hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye!